everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you um, on this lovely Sunday. So um, mine is showing that I'm muted. Is that right, Christy? Okay. Um, so it's a pleasure to be with you. We're delighted to be with you here today. Um, we're going to go into our uh, webinar about teaching, coding, and game design with Game Maker. Um, I hope, hope you're all keeping uh, keeping really well at the moment. Um, a couple of things we're going to cover um, towards the end. We're going to look at um, COVID support that we're providing. And um, we're also, uh, if you make it all the way through to the end, we're going to be providing you with um, uh, free licenses. So a free license on how to use uh, on using Game Maker. So through to the agenda, um, we're going to do a quick intro on Game Maker. Um, we're going to look at um, how educators um, teach Game Maker, the approaches that they take, and um, the experiences that they've found when they've been doing it. Um, we're going to look at um, teaching Game Maker at different stages, um, at different um, uh, ages of students, and, uh, and we're going to look at then how the licensing works, COVID learning support data privacy and licensing, and also um, we'll have a Q&A at the end. Um, so Game Maker um, was first developed in, um, in 1999 for um, use in education by Professor Mark Overmars. Um, it's, a, it's a 2D um, game development tool, which is important because it, it removes much of the complexity associated with 3D games um, and allows for uh, faster progress. Um, there's drag and drop um, for uh, learning the fundamentals, so you can you can understand the um, the building blocks and then progress to pro coding when you're ready. And you're actually able to um, convert your um, drag and drop projects through to um, to through to code as well. And we also use um, GML, which is Game Maker language um, from the co coding perspective. And this is a JavaScript like language. Um, based on C, um, and it's been designed specifically for making games, so uh, it's uh, really nice and easy to pick up. Um, so we include within Game Maker um, an image editor, sprite editor, uh, object editor, and room editor. Um, it also now includes our sequences animation tool as well, um, which we launched last year. Um, there are free teacher resources um, that teach the fundamentals of coding and help students to build their own game step by step, which we'll be looking at. Um, and we've also got a new um, uh, piece of um, educator material that you can use um, for uh, age sort of 17 plus really. So looking at colleges and universities at that level. Um, and I'll be showing you the game that we, uh, that we use that for as well. Um, We've got a large active community um, with a forum and social media um, and beginner tips from the pros. Um, we also have a lot of uh, big studio credibility. So students can see hundreds of real games um, with many multi-million sellers, including um, uh, Hyperlight Drifter as an example, which is currently the, um, or it was the 2019 uh, uh, iPad game of the year. Um, and uh, you can export your games to mobile, console, web, and desktop. And uh, as I say, we have over a thousand new users signing up every day. Um, so it's a, whilst it's a, a professional tool, um, it's also a foundation tool because 90% um, of those new people signing up every day are, um, are beginners. We sent out a questionnaire to our teachers at the start of November in uh, 2020. Um, the responses are consistent when we asked the same question back in 2019, um, where we were asking how effective game design lessons are teaching various aspects. So um, learning engagement came out top, um, individual confidence, planning, programming, um, programming we'd have expected, um, but also, you know, there's some really nice ones in here in that it improves um, the student teacher bond and, um, and class behavior as well.
I'm often asked what age game maker is taught at, and um, and this was one of the questions that we uh, that we asked. Um, and um, what we're going to be looking at here today is we're going to be looking at really three sections: age twelve through to fourteen, and then um, fifteen and sixteen, and then seventeen and, and over. Um, so there are three distinct ways that this is uh, is taught, which we'll be going into. So more generically and broadly, um, this is how teachers approach the teaching of game design, um, again, from the survey. So what we can see here is um, predominantly, um, uh, we see uh, 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 the teacher sets a, a project with objectives for students to interpret. And that tends to happen more at age 15 and 16. Whereas at 12 to 14, you tend to see more um, situations where um, a game is being made step by step um, with the teacher leading or, or just using video um, and uh, and obviously at that point you also tend to bring in in the um, the fundamentals of coding as well so um, this is how teachers evaluate the progress being made by students um, the free tutorials that we uh, that we provide um, include fully documented teacher and peer evaluation criteria age 12 to 14. Um, assessing progress can be a difficult part of home learning, um, though. Uh, so what we what we're able to do there is um, enable easy sharing of games so the educators can actually check on progress. In a previous survey, um, we got some great feedback from educators on how using game design has aided the um, education process in their schools. So we had the kids are happier in class. There aren't behavior problems like in other classes. Games require creatives and tech teams to work together with a common goal to solve. While they build goals, games, they also build friendships, learn to overcome hardships and create something meaningful. My students very much enjoy the game design units that I teach. Personally, I think that game design is effective at improving problem solving, attention to detail and teamwork. The students have learned to solve complex or abstract problems by themselves. The content provides a sufficient challenge and helps develop persistence and attention to detail. It has certainly enabled some students who are otherwise disengaged from the curriculum to re-engage. And then the follow up to that was asking um, what aspects of learning game design that the students enjoy the most. Definitely the end where they finally try their own game, even if it was the most simple game in the world. Learning to overcome challenges and have a working program. The students love to show their parents what they have made by themselves. They are very proud if they get ideas done and improve their skills. The feeling of accomplishment when completing a game and watching others play the games that they built. Just being able to create an original game, then watch their peers play the game is such a high for these kids. To be able to say, I made that is a real ego boost. Creating games, making rapid progress in a short span of time. Thinking up new games, brainstorming is normally a pain to get students to do but not when it involves game design and seeing their ideas take shape. So looking at different um, styles of, uh, of teaching at age 20, um, the curriculums are mainly focused on teaching students the fundamentals of coding and giving them engaging ways to enable them to put it into practice. And to this end, we, we created um, space bubbles, which is um, for an education environment. Um, this is a list of everything that you get with it. So you, you, there are eight one hour um, lessons with PowerPoint presentations um, and uh, three homework sheets. And the homeworks don't actually require um, access to Game Maker at home or, um, or indeed um, access to the internet. Um, there are six video tutorials, six written tutorial worksheets 
Um, and uh, there are then 15 extension and challenge tasks that are set to the for the students once they um, uh, once they've created the basic version of the game using the um, the video tutorials. Um, as I mentioned, there's an assessment system, and then there's a teacher's guide. So what we have within the teacher's guide is a structure um, that takes you through the, um, the the teaching of coding that you need to do. There's powerpoints within there, um, and and a structure to enable you to um, uh, to separate separate the um, uh, the teaching from the um, from the actual game design elements, um, and we also have completed game maker projects for each stage. So um, if anyone gets stuck at any point, that then they can they can move on and just start the next um, uh, the next project. So that, um, their their uh, their project is brought up to date. And this link at the bottom is a link that will take you through to. Um, uh, through to the, the actual content there, um, and these links will all work on the um, on the PowerPoint presentations that will be sent later. The curriculum topics um, that we cover are programming key concepts and principles, um, which include sequencing, selection statements, iteration. Um, we do modeling real world problems and physical systems, particularly in the um, in the homeworks. Um, and there's a, there's a teacher review, self review, and peer review process. So I'm going to show you Space Bubbles just now. Here we go. So this is what we uh, have. Um, we uh, we send out gamma rays to try and pop bubbles. Uh, we've got power ups there, like the, uh, the extra life I've just got. We've got um, rocks and bubbles, which have different behaviors that we um, that we program in. Um, the very first um, lesson is uh, is teaching you how to um, how to just program the background there and get that scrolling and moving around. Um, what you can see at the top um, is uh, we've got multiple lives on the left. We've got uh, the distance that we have to travel before we reach the warp gate. Um, which I don't think I'm going to make today, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so, and you can see that we've got bubbles that are dropping down here with multiple lives, and um, and we've got some particles um, when we accelerate with the um, with the the craft, um, and we've got different types of uh, you know rocks that split in two, different types of um, of uh, items that are going to come and get you, um, and you see speed upgrades. There you go. This is the game that you will actually be making um, using the space bubbles materials. No speed upgrade, but I don't. Oh, I'm, I think I'm going to make it actually. Here we go. So here we go. We've got the. Yeah, there we go. So we made it to the um, to the warp gate, and I've um, I've escaped and uh, finally made my way home. There. So um, moving on now to video tutorials, which don't require a teacher to lead. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, we have a, a lot of people signing up for Game Maker every day. So we have, um, we have a lot of um, tutorials that we make available um, for anyone that's signing up for Game Maker. And if you're still working in a, have a, a home learning environment going on, um, then these can be ideal. Um, the students can just uh, jump straight into them um, and uh, and start making a game. Um, so this one is a is a really simple um, uh, tutorial, uh, which provides about an hour of video tutorial, um, and it lets you make a game in either drag and drop or or GML code. Um, and what what we do within this is we we look to get the craft up and moving really quickly. Um, and then we, we include things like attacking and collision scores and lives and effects and then um, sound effects and polish. Um, and then to follow on from that, we have um, what we call space mods, which is taking that space rocks um, theme and, uh, and developing it further, where we bring in things like power ups, enemy ships, cameras, um, parallax layered backgrounds, which sort of give a bit of a 3D effect when you're moving. Um, 
and some visual effects like particles and screen shape like quite nicely to um, uh, the space bubbles educated materials as well where we've got some of the more advanced um, uh, extension and challenge tasks that we set. Also for age 12 to 14, um, we've got a, a game that we call Breakthrough, where um, we're bouncing um, balls against, um, against a wall and, um, and those, uh, those bricks are breaking. Um, and um, again, this is also, um, this is a little bit longer to, um, to create, but it's also in drag and drop and GML. So uh, it's quite nice because you can create it in drag and drop first, and then you can, um, you, you can go and recreate it in, um, in game maker language. Um, both of these are at very much a beginner level, um, as in complete beginner level. As you start to look at um, age 15 to 16, um, then we're looking at um, more the, at the creative application of coding. And so um, we see more project-based tutorials where you can set a theme and see how your students are going to interpret it based on a marking scheme. And, and that can include um, based on interpretation of theme, complexity or functionality used, playability is creative. Um, so this is very much about um, providing students with um, with materials that can inspire them and also teach them. So uh, we've got some resources here, um, which you'll be able to link through to, um, that provide tools, artworks, audio, etc., that can be used as the basis for game creation. Um, there's a really interesting one right at the bottom there, which is um, the Global Game Jam resources. Um, Global Game Jam is one of the largest game jams that are run that's run globally every year over three days. Um, and they, they've got a, a big pile of resources that, um, that students can just tap into and use. Free of charge, obviously. Um, we also have a number of blog articles that can provide inspiration, um, both from our team who create them and also from um, developers. So um, you know, we ask a lot of our developers who uh, who are making commercial games to then come and show people how to make how how they how they uh, approach making those games, um, and they can include um, some advice on uh, on how to structure the game, how to uh, how to approach creativity, and also some very technical um, uh, dialogue on um, how to do um, how to actually. Um, create the code that you, that's used within their games and then give you some practical examples that you can go and repeat within Game Maker yourself. Um, YouTube is a great place. I mean, Game Maker is, is really popular. We have a, a huge community um, and, and a lot of people in our community just go out and make tutorials and share them. And, um, uh, and you'll find a lot of these on YouTube. This is just a, a quick search that I did based on um, Game Maker space tutorials. Um, and so yeah, if, you're, if you're setting a theme, this is, this is ideal where you, um, students could just go in and, and look at ways in which they can, uh, they can approach, um, approach that theme and get inspiration. Uh, we also have all of our, um, uh, all of Game Maker and, and, um, uh, and the features are documented um, in our online manual. Um, there's also um, some really nice um, uh, sort of preset um, settings where uh, where students can just go in and add those to their game um, and uh, and make the most of, um, of of these. So things like high scores, for example, can just be added in using some of the presets that we uh, that we provide, and that can be really helpful for them to um, to learn how to um, how to approach um, setting those up. Um, Looking at, um, at home learning, we've got a, a hub here where we um, we've got all of our official tutorials, um, and, um, and and this includes um, specific tutorials on on each of the tools that we have. So um, you know, the image editor, object editor, room editor, sprite editor, etc. 
um, where they can just go in at their own pace um, and, um, and download those and use those um, within Game Maker so that they can, um, they can learn how to make the most of the tools that are available. At age 15 to 16, um, where we're starting to look more um, intermediate, we um, use of Game Maker, we, we have our platform tutorial. Um, and this uh, has two videos that are each about 30 minutes long. Uh, and these start at beginner level. Um, and there's links here to, uh, to get into this and to get hold of the assets. Um, and this was created uh, by Sean Spaulding, who's one of our um, leading um, community tutorial makers. And this actually links into Sean's own tutorial um, on plat making a platform game. And, um, uh, and so Sean's own tutorial case covers 27 videos. So you can make a start using our, um, our video tutorials. And then, um, and then if you want to get into this in a, in a lot more detail and, um, and build it out further, then, um, then you can just go and hook into, um, into Sean's materials. Then looking at teaching game design at college and university, um, this, is, uh, this is brand new actually. This is uh, what we call Little Town, which is um, uh, educator materials. Um, and um, these are gonna be uh, available probably in the next couple of weeks. Um, so it's based on Game Maker language. Um, and it's used for people who are maybe starting um, a, a college course or a degree and are just starting out learning how to make games. And it, it really um, skills them up very quickly. Um, it's an adventure playing game um, and it's created by um, Ben Rivers, who is a game designer um, and also a university lecturer um, at OCAD uh, University in, uh, in Ontario, where he, uh, he teaches game design for the facility, sorry, the faculty of, um, of design there. Um, these come with a, a detailed booklet um, and video tutorials, which, uh, which students can use to make the game. Um, there are about nine hours of video included within this. Um, we also provide guidance for educators on how to teach it and how to evaluate progress as well. Um, so this, as I say, is going to come along in the next couple of weeks. Now, I'm going to give you a sneak preview of uh, Little Town. Um, and we tried this out earlier, actually. So I'll just warn you, if you could just um, turn down the volume, because it, <laughs> on, on Zoom here, it comes, it comes out maybe a little bit loud, but we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. So three, two, one. Here you go, and um, and she's moving around. Um, moving around a little town, and then she's going to meet different characters. Am I going to keep these veggies fresh? And they all have their own. Um, they all have their own problems that you, you need to try and solve. And we just picked up an apple, and we're going to go and see. That's fine. We're going to see if we can um, provide an apple to the teacher. There we go. Let's see what the teacher thinks of this apple. There we go. So this is uh, this is Little Town, um, and, uh, and as I say, this is going to be coming out very soon. So I'll just close this down. There. Um, in making Little Town, we um, we include you know you probably will have noticed quite a lot of those um, the animations that we had there, and this is um, this is using our new animation facility, which we call Sequences, um, 
and uh, and so um, sequences is going to be covered a lot within um, within those tutorials. Um, for older students as well, um, there are also the, the facility for them to uh, engage with our community. You need to be age 16 plus to be able to register to do this. But um, uh, this means that they can uh, they can access the forum. Um, and uh, and it's a really active forum. You get a lot of help um, if there's anything that you're stuck with. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a it's a fun, friendly place to, to be. Um, so looking at um, the different types of licenses that we have, um, there, are, there are basically three types. Um, there's the educator license, which works on desktop. Um, so you can export your, um, your games to Windows, Mac or Linux. Then there's educator plus, which also includes um, a web export for HTML5. And, um, and finally, there's Achiever, um, which is generally uh, more often to be used at college and university where um, there's additional exports such as mobile um, for Android and iOS and Fire. Uh, UWP, which gives you access using the um, with, uh, Microsoft Creator program to be able to uh, put a game onto an Xbox One. And there's also a PlayStation license as well. Um, game Maker itself currently works on Windows and Mac. Um, but uh, we're also looking at the moment to um, see if we can get uh, Game Maker working on Chromebook. So that, that's the plan. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that shortly. Um, we ran this in, uh, in November, and I pre presume that things have changed quite a lot. But we, uh, we thought we'd take a look to see um, how COVID was, um, was affecting um, people at school. Um, and what we discovered was 95% um, of, um, uh, of classes were, or teachers were actually um, affected by COVID. And so one of the things that we put in place as a result of that um, is that all licenses um, that are purchased come with five sessions. So um, Game Maker works on a per seat basis, a per, per um, concurrent seat basis. Um, which often means um, that in a, in a classroom environment, if you have a, a, a lab of, um, let's say, 20 PCs, um, then you'll only need 20 licenses, and then you have multiple students using those PCs with each class. Um, but when we had a home learning situation, then obviously you needed more those licenses to work for multiple students. So, um, so we provide... Um, until the 30th of June this year, um, five sessions per license. So for each license you own, you can um, run that on five machines simultaneously. And that seems to have been worked pretty well for, um, for everyone that we're, um, that we're dealing with. We haven't had anyone come back so far and said that, um, that they need, need more than that. Um, but basically, anyone that's having any difficulties as a result of COVID, we're, um, we're, we're supporting as much as we possibly can. We'll also be reviewing um, the situation as we, uh, as we approach June as well, to see uh, how things are, are, are panning out really. Um, it seems to be quite changeable and very changeable in different countries right now. Privacy is an important aspect of, um, uh, of Game Maker as well. Um, one of the things that we do is that uh, the teacher sets up um, the account with uh, with YoYo -Yo Games with Game Maker, um, and uh, and then they they purchase their seats and then they allocate the seats, and um, and and they allocate those based on um, normally based on the device that it's going to. Um, so generally. Um, what happens is, um, you know, it may be seat one, seat two, et cetera, et cetera. So we don't receive any information on the, um, on the students. There's, uh, there's no um, data that's provided to us uh, in regard to the students. So student identity is, uh, is completely protected. Um, 
if you need more detail about um, how that works, then um, there's a privacy policy that we have here, which you can link through to. And um, and if you go down to the section, which particularly was, uh, uh, affects um, or regards to um, education, then um, uh, you can read more about it there. Um, we have, as I mentioned, a special uh, offer for attendees. Um, and so you'll be able to just to click on this and, um, and, uh, and be able to claim your stop license. Um, one thing I mentioned earlier, um, I know there's a lot of interest in, um, in having GameMaker running on um, Chromebooks. And so one thing I would suggest, if it's something that is of interest, then I would register an account using this um, and then uh, select to be kept informed of um, education news. And, uh, and as, then as soon as, um, as soon as this becomes something that we can talk about more um, and have dates, et cetera, then we can, um, uh, we can uh, let you know. Okay, so I think that's pretty much us. Um, have we got any questions? I think there's one I can see up here. Ah, yeah, Chrome, uh, Chromebook by any chance, yes. <laughs> uh, yes, so hopefully soon. Okay, and then we have another question. Um, someone has five licenses and can I get them assigned to seats for their students? Where can they get help with this? Yeah, um, so if you go to, um, yoyogames.com slash education. Um, you, you'll see the education um, section at the top of our, our website. Um, basically, you can download uh, Game Maker from there. And so if you've, if you've set tools for, um, for, uh, um, that the students can use, they just need to download it onto a device and, um, and then you provide them with the seat credentials and they just use those to log on. Okay, and then, you know, um, Betty Jo, feel free to email me at marketing at studica.com if you still have an issue with that, and then we'll try to get that sorted out for you. Um, also, let's see what we have here. How can I use the teacher license? Um, so the teacher license is really good for, um, for just working out how to, um, how to allocate seats. Um, you can obviously go through and um, and do any of the tutorials that are that are there. Um, you know, learning how to use the um, the educator materials and um, familiarizing yourself with those, making those games. Um, that that would be a, an ideal preparation. Also, one thing with the um, teacher license is that um, we give you access to any uh, any betas that come out. So uh, we provide updates generally on about a quarterly basis um, with some new functionality. So um, if you can see that, that that's coming out, then you can go in and play around with that new functionality. We don't provide access to betas um, for our standard student licenses, because obviously that, that could be problematic, um, but the teachers can go in and, um, and test those out as well. Okay, and then um, how can students download GameMaker without creating an account? Oh, that was um, that was the earlier answer. So um, basically, all you need to do is just go into yoyogames.com, and um, uh, and they don't need to sign up or do anything. They just need to go to the education uh, page, um, and uh, and then you'll see that there's um, there's a button. They click to download, and it will just download it without any sign up. Okay, and then. Um... You can look in the Q and A section. There is another question: How suitable would Game Maker be as a follow up to an introductory coding class? Perfect. Um, in fact, that that's basically the way that we that we've structured the um, uh, the space bubbles content. Um, it includes the, the powerpoints include the introductory um, uh, coding. Um, so it may be probably be worth having a look at those PowerPoints and seeing what, what degree of overlap there are. You may find that some of those PowerPoints that we have um, will probably be a little bit more applicable to a, a game situation, in which case you can choose whether or not you want to use some of those PowerPoints or, or use what, what, you're, what you're using at the moment. 
Um, but then uh, once you once they've they've learned how to uh, how to approach coding, then um, then they just go straight in and follow the the step by step video tutorials, which um, which take them through making the game. And um, before they know where they are, they um, they're actually applying what they've learned. Great. Um, that looks like the end of the questions that I have. Okay. I'll just move to the final slide. Great. And thank you so much, Andrew. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, if you do want any more information or you would like to request a quote, you can email us at um, the email address on the screen, which is info at studica.com or also marketing at studica.com. And we'll be happy to help you. And just a reminder, I will be sending a follow up email. It will include um, this presentation with all the relevant hyperlinks that you would need as well as a recording. And if you do have questions, you can also um, follow up to that as well. And I just want, uh, Andrew, another question just popped up. Oh, okay. Um, did I understand you say that students can download GameMaker for free or is it just the student price and it includes five seats? So this might be um, something that we should take offline just to get it taken care of. Um, Feel free to email me again at the email address marketing at studica.com, Betty Joe, and we can, you know, we can look into your account and see what's going on and try to help you from there. Um, for everyone else, just thank you so much for joining us today. And if you do have any further questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you.